a daily dose of practical wit and wisdom with a professional educator and trainer, Amazon best-selling author, United States Marine, television and radio host, Paul G. Markle. Each episode will focus on positive and productive ways to strengthen your mindset and help you improve your relationships, career goals, and overall well-being. Please welcome your host, Paul G. Markle. Hello and welcome back to Morning Mindset. Welcome to a brand new show. Welcome to a brand new week. And I've got a challenge for you this week. Yes, Uh, according to the uh, production calendar, the ever-present production calendar that my my behind-the-scenes producer keeps me uh, working on, is this is a Monday show. So I've got a challenge for you this week. Grab some some dead tree and exercise your brain. Okay. Despite all the shiny electronic gadgetry that constantly screams for our attention, you need to pick up a book, a genuine, no kidding, dead tree version, and read it. You'd think in our modern era that with all of the iPhones and iPads and tablets and smartphones and all the electronic distractions that that books would probably be on the downturn, right? You know, like, do people even write books anymore? Do people read books? Well, Amazon actually has over 3.4 million different book titles available for purchase. I was actually uh, did a, a little trip back in time here recently. Uh, I'm an older gentleman. I'm not too old, but uh, I was a fan of The Doors way back in the, uh, well, I guess beginning around 1980, uh, in the 79, 80 time frame. Of course, The Doors had broken up by then, but I discovered them when I was a teenager, when I was a young teenager. And recently, I kind of rediscovered The Doors. Not that I never stopped liking them, but, you know, other music and styles came out, and I got in the mood, and I started listening to The Doors. I put on my headphones, and I listened to, oh, I don't know, the 25 or 30 greatest hits compilation uh, uh, from Amazon. And (laughs) I did some research, and I did some more reading uh, about Jim Morrison, And according to Jim Morrison's teachers, the late singer of The Doors, even at a relatively young age, was a voracious reader. Matter of fact, the band's name was taken from an Aldous Huxley novel, The Doors of Perception. And a lot of you, you music geeks and aficionados may have known that already. But reading is not just for students. Reading is actually for teachers. Reading is for instructors. Reading actually is for writers. How many of you out there are aspiring writers? I know there's some of you. Some people out there, you said, you know what? I've always wanted to write a book or I've wanted to write a novel or I'd like to write fiction. Or maybe you would just like to write about your favorite topic, whatever that topic happens to be. The most skilled writers in the world are avid readers. And I know that this may seem overly obvious, but it's not. You know that drinking enough water, an ample amount of water, is good for you, right? You do. How many of you drink more than 32 ounces of water a day? Now, I'm not talking about coffee or soda or tea or whatever. I'm talking about, like, just legit water. And you say, well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I know it's good for me. Uh, dietary fiber. <laughs> you all know and you'll probably agree that dietary fiber is important in your daily food intake. How many of you make sure that you do that? You're like, Uh, Yeah, sometimes. Exactly. And when I say to you, you need to read to exercise your brain, to strengthen your brain, actually. How many of you actually do it? Now, you say, oh, I guess it's true. You know, I I should read. And and I understand that it's brain exercise. And I know that it it helps me focus and, and so forth. Reading will help you focus. Reading will help you with attention span. If you have a a well, not good attention span, shall we say. 
Reading will help you increase your attention span. If you are feeling distracted constantly, take the time. Get and I'm when I say a dead tree, I'm serious. Now, Kindle readers are great, and don't get me wrong, I read books on Kindle all the time, but I really like to take some dedicated quiet time and get a book and sit by myself and read a book, an actual book. And when I read, the vast majority of the time when I'm reading, I'm not reading fiction, I'm actually reading history or facts, and I will read with a highlighter and a pen or a pencil very close at hand. Generally, I'll have a pencil and a highlighter right there next to me with my cup of coffee while I'm reading because I know that what I'm reading is probably, well, it's educational or it's historic or what have you, and I'm going to want to take notes. And I wanted to challenge you. Remember we talked uh, previously about maintaining the habit and about developing good habits and how as humans, as creatures of habit, Sometimes it's difficult for us. Sometimes it's difficult for us to actually take the time and do something that we know is valuable. For instance, reading. How many times have you either said it yourself or you've heard people say, oh, you understand, I'm a busy person, I got a family, I got a career, I got this, I got that, I don't have time to read. How many times have you heard that? I hear it all the time. I hear it from people that are my peers. They say, ah, yeah, yeah, I I get it, Paul, but I don't have time to read. Mm, You probably do. And I guarantee if I walked around behind you for a day with a stopwatch and timed what you spend your time on, there would be time in your day to read. But you don't do it. Why? Because you allow yourself to accept the excuse. Saying the words, I don't have time to read, I'm too busy, is an excuse that we offer ourselves, is it not? Oh, crap, you caught me. Yes, I did. I did, I caught you. So I don't care what you read. I don't care what the topic is. I don't care. But I want you to develop the good habit of reading. And what do we say about physical training and strength training? It's better for you to dedicate yourself. And even if you can only sit down for 15 minutes, If you can take a 15-minute break, pick up a piece of dead tree, pick up a book, open it up, and read a chapter. Just one. I'm not asking you to read the whole book in one night. And some of you may be really fast readers. Some of you may be really slow readers. Uh, My wife gets on me all the time. She said, I don't understand how you can take so long to read something because she's a fast reader. And I am a reader. Sometimes I'll get to reading And I'll go back and I'll reread the previous chapter or I'll reread the previous couple of paragraphs just so that I got it. And I'll highlight it and I'll do that. But that's me. But I want you to develop that habit. As you begin a brand new week, I want you to exercise your brain. I want you to take the time to read something, even if it's only sitting down for 15 minutes. All right. Is that good? Does that work for you guys? All right. That's a challenge for you. And if you, uh, well, if I may be so bold to recommend some recommended reading, I'd like for you guys to go to Amazon. And if you have kids, if you know someone who has kids, if you have grandkids, I highly suggest the book Team Honey Badger, Raising Fearless Kids in a Cowardly World. Now, it's available as a dead tree version. That's right, a paperback version on Amazon. Or if you really, really want to use your Kindle reader, you can do that too. Team Honey Badger, Raising Fearless Kids in a Cowardly World on Amazon right now. I'm Paul Markle. You've got your homework assignment, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you for spending time with us today. To get show notes, submit a topic request, and for more from your host, Paul D. Markle, visit morningmindsetpodcast.com. That's morningmindsetpodcast.com. Please leave a review for this podcast on your favorite podcast player. We appreciate your time and effort, and we look forward to reading your honest feedback.